Yu-Gi-Oh! is one of the largest trading card games in the world. With other forms of media consisting of the anime and video games, there's something for everyone. But what about me? I've never played Yu-Gi-Oh! at a competitive level before, so this is my challenge. Starting with only three structure decks and on a budget of $40 a week, I will try to build a competitive deck using only sealed products and try to become the next king of games. This is Yu-Gi-Oh! OG. Welcome everyone to the first episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! OG. Before we really get into things, please check out Nimnim and Rev's cards as they were my inspiration to start my own sealed only journey. My name is Brad and I've been a fan of the franchise for as long as I can remember. One of my earliest memories consists of pulling a first edition LOB Exodia that I still have to this day. There are many things I really want to get out of this series. As stated in the intro, I've never played Yu-Gi-Oh! at a competitive level before. This gives me the opportunity to learn what it's all about. From deck building to combos, I truly get to step into the shoes of a true Yu-Gi-Oh! competitor. Honestly, I want to rekindle my love for Yu-Gi-Oh! Recently, I've fallen back in love with it, but now I want to do more than I ever have before. Just like Kobe said, I want to enjoy this journey. It's not about the destination, it's about the journey. It's easy enough to just get the cards I want, but learning new strategies and using cards I never would have used before is really what this is about. Each week I'll be opening $40 worth of sealed product that will help our deck improve over time. After each opening, I'll add the newly acquired cards to the deck and see how it stacks up against the competition. With the current state of the world, it'll be very difficult to play in person. However, I do have a couple friends that I will play against every now and then. The rest of the duels will either be held on EDO Pro or Dueling Book. This is where you come in. Every week I'd like to challenge some of you. Just leave a comment and you might get picked. Without further ado, let's hop on into it. Welcome everyone to the very first episode of our sealed only challenge. Now from the trailer, you guys could tell we have three different decks we're trying to choose from what we're going to build competitively. So we have our choice of pendulum domination where we just go down a dark pendulum path. Are we going to go with the brand new structure deck spirit charmers? Oh, so many amazing staple cards in this deck but the Spirit Charmers themselves aren't great. It doesn't mean we couldn't find a better engine to work with these great staples. Or we're going with the classic Blue Eyes White Dragon. However, there's not much in here. Blue Eyes, who really knows if it's competitive, but Dragon Link is, so it's, it's really tough to say. But I think, honestly, we're gonna go with Saga of Blue Eyes White Dragon. Although I've never played competitively, Blue Eyes is definitely a deck that I really love ever since, you know, watching Cobb use it in the anime. I know it wasn't really a blue eye centric deck, but come on, what's more iconic than this bad boy right here? So uh, without further ado, let's pop these bad boys open. So we have our deck list with some combos. I honestly might need that. We have our deck here as well. We also have an awesome play mat, which I really think they need to just release some cloth ones. I mean, this is really nice and all, but let's be honest. This isn't what we all want anymore, especially at this day and age. Although these structure decks did only cost us $10 a piece, that brings our budget to 30, so we need to spend an extra 10. So what I did, I got us a beautiful play mat from bull moose this is their own custom play mat which i think is awesome i love it and i think this is definitely what we're going to be rocking for the series so now let's pop open the actual structure deck we did get some beautiful ultra pro white sleeves to kind of match the theme oh man look at that bad boy looks great and ultra rare i mean this isn't my favorite art i prefer the ones that came in the structure deck kaiba like the very first structure decks and honestly, I, I don't really like any of the other arts. I mean, I'm cool with this one. The Ultra Rare does look really nice, but I, I prefer, that's what I consider the OG because that was the first one I ever saw. Get that crap out of here. Just kidding, love them both. All right, so we have Blue Eyes White Dragon. Gosh, that's beautiful. Azurai Silver Dragon. Maiden with the Eyes of Blue. Dragon Shrine. Oh, I didn't know that was super rare. I've literally never opened the structure deck, so this is kind of a new thing for me as well. 
We have Rabid Dragon, Alexandrite. That'll probably be a good level four that we play. Same with Luster. I mean, maybe we'll throw that in as well. Darkstorm Dragon, Mirage. I know that's good for traps. Divine Dragon, Apocrylith. I don't think I've ever seen that. And the White Stone of Legend. That's definitely going to be in there. Oh, Kaiba Man. Ooh, Honest, probably early build. That'll be in there. Burst Stream. Love this card. Stamping Destruction. Wing Beat. Trade in easily. Same with Cards of Consonance. White Elephant's Gift, one for one, without a doubt. Same thing with Monster Reborn. Dragonic Tactic, Soul Exchange, Econ, that, that I actually might make its way in the deck as well. Fiendish Chain, Kunai with Chain, Damage Condenser, Call of the Haunted, Compulse, that actually probably wouldn't be bad. Champions, Vigilance, wait, why are there monsters? Oh, okay, um, so we have Rider of the Storm Winds, so that's another level one tuner. Kaiser Glider. Why are they in the back? That's really weird. Erratic Dragon of Tefnuit. Uh, Silver's Cry, which is fantastic. Swords, and then Castle of Dragon Souls. Uh, so all in all, not a great deck in today's format. Probably back in the day was much better. There are a lot of support cards that we need. But uh, I think it's time to get cracking with some deck building. Other two. Well, folks, I think we got something. So we got a 40 card main deck, a six card side deck, and then our three card extra deck, which I think was pretty standard. Starting off with our monsters, though, obviously, we got to rock the triple blue eyes, white dragon. These bad boys, it's pretty much. Those are gonna be the mascot of this deck and probably this whole series, honestly. Again, not my favorite art, but I think that you kind of got around three of them, especially in these early builds and probably for the whole series as well. Up next, we have the triple Maiden with Eyes of Blue. Without a doubt, probably one of the best cards in the deck at these early stages and probably will be for a while as well. Uh, that's one of our actual negates, maybe even possible synergy, who really knows? And then, Surprisingly, we have Triple White Stone of Legend. This card's actually pretty good. Um, normally, you would only see like one or two run. I'm rocking three for now, and I'll kind of explain to you guys a bit later why that's the case. And I've got Double Rider of the Storm Winds. This is pretty much just an equipped card to put on to Blue Eyes to kind of buff them up and kind of just help it out. Then, for just some non-Blue Eyes cards, we have the Triple Luster Dragon. This is just a nice little 1900 beat stick that we're putting out there. And then we're also throwing out the triple Alexandrite Dragon. This is just a 2000 beater as well. And then we're rocking two Honest. This is again, just to kind of beef up those monsters. This could honestly be three eventually, we'll kind of see. And now for the spells. So for our spells, we are rocking the triple trade-in. Honestly, that'll get us some solid draw power, and these are going to be cards we're going to use for the long run anyway. And why we're rocking that triple white stone of legend, because of cards of consonants. Again, get us that draw power that we're going to need eventually, and honestly to this day as well. Then I am rocking three Silver's Cry. This card is pretty much Monster Reborn, just a once per turn. But what's cool is it's actually a quick play spell. And then also, we're going to be rocking not one, but we're going to be rocking two Dragon Shrine. This is literally just a Foolish Burial, but a once per turn. Um, this card will kind of get better down the road as well. Probably won't see too, too much play for now, but it's something that could be used in niche situations. And now we have one more two of, which is kind of a strange card to rock, but we're just going to kind of see how it works. Uh, Dragonic Tactics. So pretty much tribute two dragon monsters, a special summon a level eight from your deck. So if we can turbo out a couple monsters, you know, get that free blue eyes out on the field and do some damage, hopefully. And we're rocking two one ofs. We got one for one. This is going to be one of the cards that actually turbos out some level one monsters, which we actually have a few of in the deck. And then we also have our beautiful 
Monster Reborn. We just need that Reborn power. Honestly, I think this card should be used more often. And it's just something we don't see. And for the rest of our Spell and Trap cards, I have three Champions Vigilance. Uh, this is just, if you control a level seven or higher normal monster, you're able to actually destroy a card when a monster summoned or when an effect is activated. Um, again, I'm not sure how much use it'll get, but you know, it'll be something and it's better than nothing. And then I'm running the Triple Compulsory Evacuation Device. I think that this card can be good. Again, I'm just not a huge fan of the targeting effect, but it's something that I think can be used. And now for our extra deck, I think it's pretty obvious what we're gonna be running. The triple Ezra's Silver Dragon. Eventually, this will probably just get cut down to one, but for now, this is something... I think three is perfectly fine to have. I mean, I doubt that we'll ever use three, but might as well fill up that extra deck for now. And then, we actually do have a six-card side deck. Uh, I have three Fiendish Chain and three Enemy Controller. Fiendish Chain, I feel like, will actually probably end up getting quite a bit of use, and this might actually make its way into the main deck. An Enemy Controller... You know, if I just need to stop an attack or something, or if I just need to take a monster, that's pretty much what that's going to be used for. So, yeah, I think it's pretty obvious this deck isn't going to be doing much for a while. However, we're going to roll with it. Um... And let's just hop into a couple duels. So our first match, obviously we were playing against Blue Eyes. So much better than the deck we have right now. I think that's quite obvious to tell. Our pans and our entire deck is just going to be straight trash. Uh, obviously he does the typical Blue Eyes plays that you're going to get. See the melodies. You're just going to see a lot of these combos. It looks like he's actually playing a version of the Chaos. Um blue eyes deck as opposed to just the standard blue eyes dragon like that we're kind of going for here as you can see he just goes full combo because obviously we don't have any interruptions and uh unfortunately uh we get otk'd game two we actually start out with someone of a better hand so i was kind of happy about that and then so obviously we're going to revive the alexandra dragon play that other one we can actually get into our azurai silver dragon turn one very exciting we also sided in the fiendish chain as well as some Econs in there. I learned very quickly that a lot of these cards we are not going to want in our deck whatsoever. And here we go for the Fiendish Chain on the alternative. Doesn't matter, he draws into the Sage, taps it out, goes into the brand new Blue Eyes card. And once again, he's just pretty much going to go full combo on us. Uh, we do survive this, but unfortunately we're not going to draw into much. And he's going to be taking the cake on this game. Round number two, we are playing against a Dark Magician. Obviously, we can't do anything. What else is new? This is going to be very typical for the first few weeks. He does pretty much make full board here, and we kind of just have to accept it. All right, game numero two. We open uh, pretty much as good as we're going to open right now. He, once again, obviously, going full Dark Magician combo. I think he ends up, gosh, he, he just wipes the floor with me. I try to compulse, try to do stuff that actually slowed him down for a little bit, or so I thought. Round numero three. We end up playing against ABC. Uh, we get the Maiden, and that's pretty much it. Champion's Vigilance is such a terrible card, I don't even know why I considered running it to begin with. He, well, it's funny because... He goes with Union Carrier, pulls out a few more stops, and then he just kind of... He played this very strange, I felt. I mean, obviously he's going to get the win anyway. Or is he? So he disconnects. I guess we'll take that win. So round four, I was kind of confused as to what he was playing. Just pulled out the Time Thief. And that's... I was wondering, Time Thief? Is he playing something else? Because I wasn't really familiar with those first couple of cards that he played. So I actually put out a decent board or so I thought anyway get some decent damage out there and I'm like okay maybe we actually have a chance 
Um, yeah, and he pulls out a couple of facts. I see the manju, and I'm like, huh, what's he playing? Rituals? Oh, Shino Birds. Again, deck I'm not familiar with whatsoever, just like many of these decks I'm going to be ending up playing against. But we're going to give a solid effort anyway. Unfortunately, we lost the audio for game two, but we did actually pull out the win. I was very surprised. I don't know how, but we did. Game three. We are tied 1-1. I'm surprised we actually made it to a game three. Again, you can probably not expect what the outcome is going to be. So obviously, we lost all those games there. I mean, the guy disconnected, but I'm not going to count that towards our win total. So but we'll just say we're 0-3 for now. I mean... I, I was going to lose that. We'll, we'll call it 0-4. Let's just be honest. Uh, unfortunately, this is what it's going to look like for a little while, considering the current state of our deck, and there's not really any quick and easy way for us to just bump it up to that next level. But hopefully we'll be able to change that soon enough? Question mark? Clearly, our deck isn't at a very high level. However, this is something we may actually be able to change here soon. With the recent release of Legendary Duelist Season 2, we got a lot of blue eyes support. Obviously, it'll take much more than this to make a competitive deck, but this will be a solid foundation. I do plan on opening some of this set in the next episode, so we'll see you then.